Exodus chapter 20, we find a record of God giving what we call the Ten Commandments to Moshe, Moses. We have been walking with God and Moses over the past several weeks, digging for the wisdom that is born of the thought that the law and the prophets embody loving God and loving people. These are the words of Jesus Christ, Matthew chapter 22. We've determined that if loving God and loving people is what the law and the prophets are about, then the Ten Commandments have to be the beginning of a love story. As we walk through them, we have been able to see truly they embody love. God introduce, uh, introduces himself very early in Exodus 20, letting them know who he was. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. We noted here, it looks like what happens when someone has been given secret gifts to somebody they love, only to find out later or share with them, hey, I'm the one that's been giving you these gifts. Love story. He begins to unpack the, the rules of engagement as it relates to this love. You will not have any other gods before me. I have to be one. I have to be only. I'm not into the second place situation. Further, you should not make any uh, make for yourself any idol, any form of anything. Now, this is something that people in their time did. God says between you and I, it's not going to happen. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Uh, my name means something and you have to represent me well, even as you respect what my name is. Remember the Sabbath. We we noted that that's just quality time as you're going about your life. There has to be a time where you uh, take time for what's important. Uh, remember what this is about, which I should say is opposite what we do sometime in our culture. Uh, it, it's, it's good to rest. It's good to have a time. Even God rested. He's God. Uh, so we rest. We have to take care of our bodies. We transitioned from loving God to loving people. Honor your mother and your father, your father and your mother. We dealt with that, uh, that you may live long in the land. Furthermore, don't murder. Don't take anybody's life premeditatively. We, we dealt with that. If you love someone, you're not going to take their lives. You're not going to premeditatively uh, stop the image of God from existing in their presence or in their being. Last week, don't commit adultery. We dealt with that. It's, a, it's not a loving thing to do uh, to commit adultery or to put a person in a situation that they do the same. Today, you shall not steal. Uh, it seems pretty straightforward, point blank. Uh, stealing is not a loving thing to do. I want us to look at this in two ways as we consider don't steal. We're going to look at it from the way of God first. If I determine to take something that it does not belong to me, if I determine to take something that is illegal for me to take, then I am saying I don't trust for God to give me what I need. So I'm going to take it upon myself to take what I want. And that is not a faithful thing to do. Remember, everything that we're talking about in the Decalogue and the Ten Commandments is, is God's way of sharing with Israel, his people. This is how you get through life. Remember, God had 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 told uh, Moses to go tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they may worship me in the wilderness. They did not know how to be what God has called them to be. They did not know how to live that out. So he gave them these rules. Paul actually unpacks this in, in, a, in, in a letter to the Galatians when he tells them that the only reason we have the law is because Israel did not know how to act in the wilderness. 
So the law was designed to give them a list of do's and don'ts so they would know how to be the people that God has wanted them to be, that he's wanted Adam to be, that he wants all of us to be. So the idea that I go about stealing something illegally, taking something that doesn't belong to me is me saying, God, I do not trust you enough to give me what I need and watch this, what I want. You know, a lot of times uh, we have plenty of what we need, but you know, we're human, right? We're, we're kind of greedy. You know, sometimes we, we get into ourselves. So it's not that God didn't give me what I needed, that God didn't give me what I wanted. And if God doesn't give me what I want, then sometime I might be tempted to go and take something that God doesn't even want me to have. It, it, it might be a reason why God has not given me something that I'm asking for. Uh, if, if Sarah asked for the keys to the car, I don't know if Sarah's ready. I mean, I think she's in, you're in driver school, right? Sort of, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's, let's pretend you the, you're the 12-year-old version of Sarah, okay? And the 12-year-old version of Sarah says, Dad, can I have the keys to the car? You know, I want to go uh, to, I want to drive to school today. And Stevie says, no, sweetie, you're not ready yet. That's because his wisdom is saying you're not ready yet. But Sarah not hearing none of that, so while Stevie is asleep, Sarah takes the keys, and she goes on a joyride. Isabel knows all about it, ain't told nobody. <laughs> she down for the plan. <laughs> she, she riding shotgun, you understand? My premise is, she's doing something that her father says she's not ready for because he has the wisdom to let her know what is wise and what is not, what is legal, what is not. As adults, sometimes we think because we're grown, you understand? We can do some stuff, and God will let us do it because he has free will. He has a permissive will. But a lot of times, we don't have what we're asking for because God doesn't want us to have it. Even James says, did he not in the letter of uh, uh, Jesus' brother said, uh, you ask for stuff because you're lusting for it. You're not even looking for it for the, wrong, for the right reasons, and you're asking amiss. And, and God is not giving it to you, and so you go and steal it. Lack of faith. The second thing that, that stealing does, it shows a, a, a lack of love for your fellow man, your fellow woman, your fellow human. Uh, one of the things that's being stolen a lot nowadays, we've talked about it before, catalytic converters. It, it's just, and I'm trying to figure out when, when, the, when the powers that be decided to create the catalytic converter, why did y'all use precious metals? I understand why, because it has something to do with breaking things down so it'd be better for the atmosphere. I get it. But somebody found out that there was precious metals in it, and they're literally just going up to cars and getting on them and with a sawzall, just cutting it in, in seconds. And, and I'm, so when that person gets ready to go to work, or God forbid, their kid is sick and they have to get them to the hospital and now they can't move because their car doesn't have a catalytic converter, that's, that's an act of hatred. It's saying, I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you have going on in your family. I don't love you like that. And don't get it wrong. We like to talk about this gray area, but I'm sorry. It's either love or hate. There is no middle ground. Satan says there's a middle ground. There's not one. You either love a person or you hate a person. Now, if you don't know him, you don't know him. So I hope you understand what I'm saying. For me to go and take something that does not belong to me, and it's something that somebody else has worked for or need. That's a hateful thing to do. That actually fits inside of the mold that Jesus says to to love God and love people is what the law is about. So if I'm not going to if, if 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 my mindset is to go and take from a man something belongs to him, that's a hateful act. We see these things in scripture. Uh, I'll give a couple of them and then I'm gonna give you the message. Uh, David, he stole a man's wife. I don't know what you can steal worse than that. He, he stole a man's wife, literally stole her, stole Bathsheba from Uriah, Uriah the Hittite, Uriah, stole her, stole her. She did not belong to him, but because he was king, she could not tell him no, because he's king of Israel and he had that type of authority. So he says Uriah into the, into the wall to die 
so he wouldn't get in trouble for getting his wife pregnant. Something wrong with you, brother. Now, we know David pursued the heart of God. And what happened with Bathsheba is not the embodiment of who David was, but it was a hateful act at the time. And because of the decision that he made, God said that the sword is not going to leave your house. You still going to have an everlasting kingdom. But since you put yourself in my shoes, now I got to deal with you. It was a hateful act. Malachi gives witness to people stealing from God. Will a man steal from God? Will a man rob God? There he's talking about tithes and offerings. A tithe, this is not a lesson about tithing, it's just an example I'm using. A tithe is what belongs to him. The offering is what we give. A tithe is like that part of your tax, the part of your check that says gross, and then there's a net part. The tithe is that stuff between gross and net that you don't even get to see. You get what's left. The 10% is the tithe. The offering is what you give from what belongs to you. The tithe belongs to God. And I can say what, what belongs to us. So in Malachi, he, God is speaking to the prophet and telling these people are robbing me. Because it doesn't belong to them. That tithe belongs to me. Uh, that's not a loving thing to do. So as we consider the Decalogue and consider what it is that God wants us to do as it relates to loving people, loving him, we can't go around stealing from people, taking things that don't belong to us. And again, I'm sure nobody in this room is in the car has a mask, even though grandma has a nice straight out of Compton picture that I'm not going to talk about in my sermon. I advise you not to pull up on her. You understand what I'm saying? You're probably going to have a bad day. OK, my premise is stealing is sometimes subtle in that. What if you steal somebody's joy? What, what if you do something that, that takes the life out of them by, by treating, mistreating them and not giving them the loving respect that they deserve? What if you call them out of their name? There's different ways we can take from people, suck the life right out of them. So we have to make sure that we don't do that as, as, as well. So truly, again, as we looked at this commandment, we can see why Jesus says this is loving God and loving people. All 10 of those commandments, loving God and loving people. We cannot pretend to say we love a person that we would steal from because that is a hateful act. They've worked for it. They saved for it. They've sacrificed for it. They've done everything that you were supposed to do, but you didn't want to do. So you'll steal from them. God says, no, that's not the way that's going to play out. And God be pleased with it. OK, y'all with me? OK, questions, comments.